So you want to calculate the ABV of your mead, wine, cider, or beer? Well, get ready. I'm going to explain how to do it. There's a lot of ways to go about it, okay? There's several formulas out there, and I'm going to explain the pluses and minuses to all of those. But the one thing I want to say is that you're never going to be absolutely accurate, okay? Without using a lab, it's almost impossible because a hydrometer can only get you so much accuracy. So when I see people doing it out to like, I got 10.98765% alcohol, you can't possibly get that kind of accuracy. Sure, you can calculate numbers like that, but it doesn't mean that it's accurate, okay? Um, usually within a point or two is really what you're looking for, and there's several ways to go about that. Now, you can get a reasonable calculation by using this formula, and that is your original gravity. What I mean by original gravity, or OG, I'll be using that term a lot, is the must's gravity before fermentation, okay? So you set it all up and it's ready to go. That's your OG. When it's finished with fermentation, that is your FG or final gravity. Now, some people call them different things. For the sake of this video, I'm going to call them OG and FG. Okay. You take the difference of those, meaning OG minus FG, multiply it by 131.25 and you get your ABV, an approximate ABV. Now, if you're a regular watcher of our show, you know that I use 135 and not 131.25. More on that in a minute. The this formula is used by many, many, many people to calculate ABV. The downfall is that it's a constant, okay? It's most accurate within the 1.7% range. That constant only works for that range. Outside of that, it varies in accuracy the further you get from that range, okay? Let me explain some more. An alternative that you might see is this formula, and that is ABV equals... Here we are, OG minus FG, again, divided by 0.75, right? And then you multiply that whole thing by 100. Some people think that's simpler. Personally, I think it's actually more complicated. You have more math to do. There's one extra step. But they come out to roughly the same thing. And you're really doing the same thing. You're just using a reciprocal instead of multiplying, you're dividing. Same, same concept, though. They're both what I call constant-based calculations, and they're always going to be approximations. I've adopted using one of these with a slight adjustment. Those, you know, this is what I alluded to earlier. Some people use 131.25, some use 131, some use 131.5, and the division method is actually using 133 as a constant. I use 135, <laughs> just to make it super confusing, right? Suffice to say, at double digit ABVs, it's a bit more accurate, but more on that coming up. For a more accurate formula, you want to take into account the lowering density as ethanol volume goes up. What that means is water has a 1.000 specific gravity, while ethanol has a 0.79 specific gravity. So it goes to say that if you have a 2% ABV, you have a little bit of the ethanol altering that 1.00, bringing it down. And if you have a lot more ethanol, say 10% or 15%, you have a lot more ethanol in there. Therefore, it's going to bring that specific gravity down. If you're using a constant as your formula for calculating, it's going to be more and more accurate the higher your amount of ethanol goes. Does that make sense? However, there are some calculations out there that attempt to use this difference to get a more accurate reading, and they actually do get more accurate readings, though again, they're still not 100% the same as a lab. I have found two. One of them is an online calculator that I'll talk about in a sec, and the other one is literally just a formula. This formula is a little bit more complicated, but let me go over it, and I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. It is ABV equals 1.05 divided by 0.79. Now, what that means is the 1.05 is the number of grams of ethanol produced for every gram of CO2 produced. That's a constant that you'd have to actually look up. I got this from a couple of different sources. They all agreed on that. So I'm going to go with that must be the accepted amount. And the 0.79 is actually the specific gravity of ethanol, right? So you have ABV equals 1.05 divided by 0.79. You multiply that by the OG minus TG, they're saying TG instead of FG. They're saying target gravity instead of final gravity. Same, same thing. OG minus TG divided by your final gravity, and then all of that times 100. To me, that's a lot of math to be maybe 
a, you know, half a point more accurate in most cases. It just seems like a lot more worry than I really want to do. Now, a lot of people like to use online calculators for this kind of thing, and you can totally do that. I, I'm more of a DIY person. I want to understand it better and do it myself. So that's why I go through all these mental gymnastics to try to figure out the best way for you guys. With this formula, though, we're starting to see the effect of ethanol on the brew. Let's do some examples. Let's take a pretty basic mead, um, OG of 1.105, and your final gravity is 1.010. Using the most basic calculation with a 131.25 constant, you get 12.47%. With 131, we get 12.44. That's really close. It's only 3.3 hundredths of a point away. With the division version, that's technically 133, we get 12.67%. So that's already 0.2% different. With my constant 135, we get 12.83%, which is like almost half a point higher, right? Now we're seeing some differences though. Um, what about the more accurate equation, right? The more accurate one, which is the more complex one I just showed you a minute ago where they use target gravity, that one comes out to 12.49%. Wait a minute, that's a lot closer than my 135. Yes, it is, but it's still all within 0.34%. And that's important to understand, 0.34 of 1%. So that's the difference between saying it's 12.34% versus 12%. Honestly, does it matter? I've never had anyone say, well, I'm not drinking this because it's not 12.34%. It must be at least that or I won't touch it, meaning it, I handed them something that was 12%. I've never had anybody say that. Most people just want to know, is it like 6, 8, 10, 15 25, 1,000, you know, that's that's the numbers they really want to hear. Um, on brewunited.com, and I'm going to put this link below, there's a more complex calculation that I have yet to actually break down. I don't know that they showed all of it. And I use that as like a check sometimes to see just how far off some of my numbers are. They came up with 12.63%. Now, this is supposedly a much more complex calculation that really takes the ethanol into account. That puts it 0.16% more than the 131.25 constant and just 0.2% away from my constant of 135. So as you can see, the numbers are all over the place. But in reality, they're all still pretty close. From highest to lowest, it's like half a point, half a percentage point difference. Not a big deal so far. But what about at higher gravity? What about when we go past that you know, 12% or so range. So let's start with a 1.140 gravity and end with 1.00 gravity, right? So now we're talking larger numbers. With the 131.25, we get 18.38%. With 131 as the constant, we get 18.34%. Okay, that's still only four hundredths of a point away. With the division formula, we get 18.66%. Well, now they're about 0.2% per, away. With 135, we get a whopping 18.9%. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but that's always overcompensating. It's making it higher. Well, in the end, does it really matter? Half a point higher? Not a big deal. With the complex formula, we get 18.6%. So it's 0.3 away from my constant of 135. With the online calculation, we get 18.81%. That is 0.09% from my number. Hmm. So they're all starting to change a little bit and the 135 is starting to become even more accurate right now things have changed a bit my constant constant is very very close um, even one point misread just just to put this into perspective when you're reading a hydrometer if you miss by one point now keep in mind you're using two different readings to do this one point even though the lines say two points there's still a point in there that we have to uh, you know is that a point is that a two points one point difference can actually be 0.13%. So the fact that my constant is 0.09% there means it's actually more accurate than being off by one number on your hydrometer reading. Just to, just to give you an idea. But the 131.25 one, now it's 0.43% away from accurate. Is that a big deal? No, not really. I don't even think that's something to consider. But at the end of the day, overall, the 135 is just a bit more accurate once we get to these kind of numbers. So why is 131.25 so popular? Why does everybody want to use it? Well, homebrewing hasn't been around that long in its current form, and the formulas and technologies that we're using today, you know, they were adapted from many things, and one of them is from beer making. Um, if we go down 
if we go down to average beer gravities, um, which let's be honest, beer gravities are rising too. Um, these numbers may mean very little these days, but beer making used to be like a 1.040 to 1.050, that those kind of numbers. So in those numbers, let's take a look. If we started with a 1.055 original gravity and went to 1.010 on a beer, using the 131.25 constant, we get 5.9%. Using 131, we also get rounded 5.90%. It was like 5.895 or something like that. So rounded up, it's 5.9. Uh, using the division method, we get 6%. So they're both within 0.1. And then using 135, we get 6.08, which only puts it as 0.18 higher than the 131.25. With the accurate calculation, we get 5.92. And with the online super accurate, cal accurate calculation, we get 5.9. So as you can see, that is totally skewed to beer. But as soon as we start going higher, becomes much less accurate. The 135 becomes more. And it just becomes this convoluted, difficult thing. But in its, in its defense, 131.25 is spot on accurate for that exact ratio. And as I said, however, we, when we get further from that gravity, it becomes less so. My 135 constant is off by 0.18%. Well, to me, that's again about as much error as misreading one point on a hydrometer. So it's plenty close enough for me, but your mileage may vary. So if you're doing beer or low ABV, 131.25 is better, but only just in reality, it doesn't matter. So final word about the constant versus uh, other calculations. You can basically use whatever one you want. On our show, we use 135 as the constant. And as long as you do your calculations the same all the time, you're getting a good relative number to the last one you made. In other words, I know that this one at 14% has a little bit more alcohol than that one at 12%. But if I use different calculations every time I do it, then I don't necessarily know because, well, was that done with this formula or with that formula? I'm not really sure. But still, even with that, at the end of the day, they're within a half point of each other. Does it really matter? Not so much because there's very, very little in home brewing that half percentage point or even one percentage point is going to make that much difference. And we always like to say yeast can't read. Well, they can't, but it's not just the yeast. Sometimes people can't read. And if you misread your hydrometer, you are making an error. And if you misread it by one point on your original gravity and another point, the other, the same direction on your final gravity, you could be off by as much as little as two points or as much as three or even four points, depending on how inaccurate you got there. And that could be a half point right there. Now add that into using a less than accurate formula and you're off by 1%, just 1%. So that means your 13% might only be 12 or it could be 14. So that gives you a plus or minus one point. That's why I say within one or two percentage points is all you can really hope for. There's nothing wrong with that, and that is okay. But just pick a constant and go with it. Um, frequent watchers of our show know that I like 135 because most of our brews fall in the anywhere from 9 to about 14 or 15% range, and it just seems to work. And 135 is a nice round number. It's pretty simple, and I can do it on my calculator. Sometimes I do it in my head. It's just really simple to do. But things get a little bit more complicated as you step feed. Mm. And that's what I want to talk about next. Let's say you made a brew and it went dry and you decided you wanted to add more sugars to it. So you added more sugars to it. Well, how do you calculate your ABV now? People ask this all the time and this was super important. And that's part of why I'm even making this video. I still use a constant. I still use 135 as my constant. So let's say you made that mead and it was at 1.090 and it ended at 0.998. You want that to be a little sweeter. It's just a little dry for you. So you added some honey and brought it up to 1.030, and it stopped again at 1.004. Let's recap. Started, OG is 1.090, FG is 0.998. You added honey, brought it to 1.030, and then your final, final gravity is 1.004. After checking to make sure it's really done by taking two readings a week apart, you do that, right? You can now calculate your approximate ABV. You take your typical OG and FG, which would be your 1.090 minus 0.998, and you subtract those and you get 0.092. Now you take your second OG and FG. That's right, you have a secondary gravity and final gravity now. It's your 1.030 and your 1.004. You subtract those. 
Now you get 0 0.034. Add those two together. So you take 0 0.092 and 0 0.034 and you get 0 0.126. Now you see why I'm reading from notes. Can you imagine if I had to try to remember all these numbers? Now, here's the easy part. You take those two numbers, multiply by 135, and boom, there's your ABV. It's that simple. And it works no matter how many times you end up adding to it. So if that was just a two step, what if you had six steps? Same thing, you just have to take your secondary, tertiary, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth edition, whatever it is, original gravity minus final gravity, and add them all together. So you're just adding up the spent gravity, essentially, is the way I like to say it, and then multiplying by 135 at the end. Very, very simple. Uh, something else that comes up a lot is people will say, oh, well, I back sweetened. How does that change my alcohol by volume? How does that change my percent of alcohol? Well, if it doesn't ferment, it actually doesn't change it. But that's not 100% accurate. Um, let me explain. Adding honey or sugar to a brew doesn't change the ABV unless it ferments. In other words, if you pasteurize or stabilize it after sweetening, the ABV remains the same. Now, aside from large volume differences, what I mean by that is if you add so much honey that you change the volume significantly, you are in effect changing the alcohol by volume since there's the same volume of alcohol in a larger total volume of brew, but that's much more than I wanted to get into in this video. That can be calculated as well, but that's another video. But anyway, that is how you calculate ABV. I'm sure someone is going to have a question. And you know what? I pay attention to those comments and questions, and I'm here to help. So if you're not sure of something that I went over in this video, ask me in the comments below, and I'll be sure to get to you. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, look up. There's no one up there. You might like that video, too.